Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today for our presentation. As you can see, our topic is the art of digital transformation. This is the first in a multi-session series. Today, we'll be discussing the strategy around digital transformation. This webinar is being recorded, so, if you, so your uh, microphones are muted. You'll have the ability to have the link to this recording later. So if anyone else in your organization would like to consume this content, they'll have that option. Go ahead and get started. So I'll be sharing with you uh, the components of digital transformation. I'll try to clear up some misconceptions we've heard in the market. We'll discuss a few different technologies required in this strategy, and then we'll talk about how to get started. If you have any questions along the way, please enter them into the questions panel in the GoToWebinar window. It should be in the bottom right-hand side of your screen. Towards the end of our time together, I'll do my best to answer them. If we cannot get to all your questions due to time restraints, we'll get back in touch with you at a later time. Please note, we're not gonna demonstrate any software today. We're just talking about strategies, some, of, some best practices around those strategies, and hopefully helping you form your own next steps to start down this journey. So before we get into the good stuff, please allow me to introduce myself. I've been in this industry uh, longer than I care to admit. Uh, I've been, I've worked in several different parts of the industry as a user, uh, a content management specialist, a capture specialist, working with system integrators and hardware providers. Basically, I've been there and done that. Uh, I'm also a professional member of AIM, which is the Association of Image and Information Management. That's a valuable resource for information. If you're not a member, maybe you should be. I promise that's the only plug for today, but know that some of the information I'm about to share with you has been validated by AIM. So let's get into it. What is digital transformation? This is a relatively new term in our industry, and I know I just shared with you that I've been doing this work for more than 20 years, and I'm an industry veteran, and now I'm sharing a new concept. So how does all that work together? Well, Digital transformation is really the evolution of terms you've heard in the past. If we go back enough years, you'd hear terms like computer output to microfilm for archiving documents. Uh, and then it was digital filing cabinet, which usually turned into digital landfill. It then turned into document management, then enterprise content management, or ECM. Then this technology became faster and stronger, and more of them were being delivered in a hosted or SaaS model. So that gave way to content services. So what's digital transformation? How does that all play together? Well, really, digital transformation is a strategy. It's not a product. It's a frame of mind to utilize technology to maximize efficiency. Digital transformation is where we're all trying to get to in the last few decades. If you had asked me 10 years ago to describe this goal, this then state of the paperless office, I would have talked about the fact that we we'll eventually get there and we'll get to that place. Well, now we're getting pretty close to it. Now, not all this technology was there 10 years ago or even three years ago. Digital transformation is closer to becoming a reality than it ever has been. But I would like to caution the audience. You can't just flip a switch and be a fully digital company overnight. This is a journey. It's not a single product. Uh, it's many products or solutions uh, working in tandem with a single goal. And that goal is increased efficiency throughout the entire organization. We'll touch on some points later on how to get started, uh, which departments are low-hanging fruit, and so on. But also know it goes beyond that one goal. Digital transformation itself is an ongoing review of the different processes and the technologies as they continue to develop and evolve. To so always be improving the plan to reduce areas of duplicate work and to better in interconnect the different lines of business applications, to expand those streamlined workflows and automate the approval process. I know it all sounds like this, uh, this big unknown theory. And a few years ago, that's exactly what we called it. But with the advent of cloud technologies, artificial intelligence, and constant improvements to technologies such as workflow, intelligent capture, and e-forms, you can start, you can begin this journey really and expect very quick successes. Another thing to consider though is the disruption this may cause. So it's important you don't try to change the entire organization at once. You should start with a department or two that lends themselves well to this type of advancement. 
the top two that come to mind for me would be human resources and maybe accounting. Those are core to any business and any organization and some of the easiest to improve. You know, each year, really each day, the uh, business users are getting more and more data, more documents, more tasks, more information, more regulation. According to AIM, this increases approximately 4x every year, up to 4x every year. We all know that we don't have the budget to increase headcount by that much every year, so that means that either some of those tasks are going to suffer or the business cannot grow. Your customers, both internal and external, will end up paying the price. And when external pay customers pay the price, typically they go somewhere else. So I'll give you a good example about digital disruption that has caused customers to move. Let's think back a handful of years. What happened to some of Amazon's competitors? Most of them had to hurry up to, to engage a digital strategy in a, in a very fast way. You know, they had to try to, catch, to keep up. Some of them didn't. Some of them are no longer brands you see in the shopping mall. In fact, many of the shopping malls are gone. Now, I know that's an example in the consumer space, and today we're really talking about the commercial space. But it's a similar story. Companies are moving to be more digital than physical in their operations, to leverage technology, to empower their, their users, their workforce. That allows them to be easier to work with with their clients, to provide better customer service, and to adopt the new technologies as the market offers them. The best thing you can do is not accept status quo, to always be improving your organization when the opportunity presents itself. That is, as long as you have a reasonable payback period in, in your time and your expenses. Now, that digital transformation will start to improve, to make improvements that will provide a lot of financial benefits like reducing your operating expenses or reducing your cost of sales or providing, you know, better services to your clients. But it also has the benefits in compliancy. The changing dynamic of compliance is being driven by the current data explosion we just talked about. The government is looking to protect the private information around the individual with new compliancy acts like HIPAA, which is not that new, but GDPR, which is relatively new. Uh, Regardless of the size of your organization, you're not exempt from these laws, and you're expected to manage your information in a compliant manner. While you might believe that this doesn't apply to your organization yet, compliancy has this cascading effect, and it rapidly picks up steam. That's because compliance officers recognize that the weakest link in the data protect protection chain typically rely, uh, lies with their vendors. That's why, increasingly, you'll see healthcare organizations require their vendors to sign what's known as a business associate agreement, or BAA, and that forces them to, uh, to manage their data. More recently, the trend is for companies who manage their data to hold their vendors to the same standards that they themselves employ. This isn't for compliance reasons. It's really more for managing the risk associated with a potential data breach and their own ex uh, exposure to liability. Chances are that if your customers are focusing on protecting their information, they'll expect you to as well. It's not uncommon for us to get a phone call from an organization who, who says that their largest customer has informed them that they won't continue to do business with them unless they comply with their own data protection policies. This leaves organizations scrambling to adopt the uh, digital transformation policy or procedure uh, quickly Rather, and, and that's not the best approach. It's always better to walk before someone else makes you run. Now, normally when I'm having this conversation, I usually get the rebuttal of, Keith, this all sounds great, but we're not a major enterprise. We can't afford all this. And if we were having this conversation a few years ago, you're probably right. But most of the required components for this type of strategy can be procured in a cloud offering. And the ones that cannot typically can be purchased in an on-premise subscription. Now, this reduces your initial investment and it becomes more of an operating expense rather than a capital expenditure, which changes the depreciation requirements. So that makes it a little easier to move down this route. Furthermore, if the discovery process is done correctly, and you don't try to boil the ocean, you can start with a phased approach where you have incremental successes and then those pay it forward for additional phases and additional successes. 
I know that sounds like a bit of a pipe dream, but you can get started easily and inexpensively, provided you don't try to change the entire organization at once. Remember, that can cause major disruption in the organization, which is bad. The time is right for these small companies or medium-sized businesses to take advantage of the same type of advancement uh, that large enterprises have taken advantage of for some time now. So as we talk about change, you have to ask yourself, how have those changes gone in your company before? Be honest with yourself, how'd they go? I'm sure we can think, uh, we can all remember some wins and some losses. Well, some of those losses happened because the person driving the change, that's known as this agent of change, was too focused on technology. In reality, it's about your customer, both internal and external. So we'll talk about both of those here shortly. Digital transformation won't require that you, that you start over. It doesn't require a total overhaul of your infrastructure. Thank goodness. What we want to do is help your coworkers have an easier way to do their job, to make it faster, to make it better, not have to start all over. Now, the culture of your company is going to play a significant role in this transformation. If you've got coworkers that are afraid of technology or reluctant to change at all, you need to bring them into the conversation early. That will benefit your plan. You need to help them understand that the plan is not to change for the sake of change, but to improve the organization to ensure its longevity. Now, the last bullet point can be a bit confusing, so allow me to provide an example. If you store documents in an off-site warehouse or a third-party storage company, there's no reason for you to scan all of that right now. You can have a hybrid solution that has recent and active documents in a digital form and legacy documents in a physical form. As long as you stop contributing to that paper storage, then as those documents age and maybe part of your attention schedule, they get shredded or destroyed somehow, or as you need a document from storage, you scan the entire box. You'll start to reduce your paper footprint. And over time, uh, that physical resource will evolve into only a digital resource. So as you can see, these thoughts uh, are supported by the uh, Harvard Business Review. That's another great resource worth considering as you move forward down this, down this journey of, of digital transformation. It's, that's a publication I read myself often. So finally, let's talk about some of the technology you're going to need to utilize. Some of this you may already own, by the way. And again, no demonstration today. It's all about strategy. Well, earlier I mentioned that according to industry experts like AIM, uh, the amount of data and documents we receive is growing at an exponential rate. This can cause an issue really for anyone, that is unless you have an intelligent capture solution. As data in your organization, as, it, as data comes into your organization or is derived from your internal line of business system, that can be your first choke point. That starts to create the bottleneck. The sooner you automate the collection, extraction, and then releasing or publishing, uh, publishing, excuse me, publishing that information, the sooner you get your hands wrapped around the problem. The effectiveness of, of your process automation project relies almost exclusively on adopting a strategy that minimizes the effort required to go uh, and convert documents into information. For years, I've told customers that any road to process improvement starts with capture of their images and then transforming that in, into high value information. Well that's still true, you know that's still true for the great extent. But more and more we are seeing information arriving in a variety of different formats. And what if we could eliminate some of those conversion efforts by mining the data that arrives via email or through PDFs or even through the adoption of some web based forms processing. We'll talk about that as well. Any good digital transformation strategy looks at where your document, is, your information really is coming from, what format is it in, and the best way to publish that back to your line of business application. You know, intelligent document capture has been around for many years, and it's evolved tremendously. One of the, the best ones that are out there uh, have the ability to learn your documents without having to tax the resources of someone in IT or having someone write some strange code to make it recognize your document. It should be easy to deploy, extendable to lots of different departments, have the ability to pull information from other resources, and allow users, you know, the volumes and the user licenses to scale up and down as your, as your business needs. Another item worth considering is how you can utilize a data-driven workflow model in the capture process. 
the sooner you can define and control the process, the better. You'll need to consider what to extract, the formats of your data, how the approval process works, the interdependencies of your departments and different systems you already have, and then how you want to release that information. You can also go so far as to determine if you have all the supporting documents for a transaction that may have been captured in earlier batches. I know it's a lot to consider. I just said a whole lot of words, right? But once it's defined and managed, you can measure, it can be measured and improved. Keep in mind, this is a journey. Your first workflow will get you started down the right path. Then you can make improvements over time. Expecting perfection from your first process is asking a lot of yourself. Don't be so hard on yourself. You know, start making improvements, then review, and make more improvements. So with that in mind, your intelligent capture solution needs to provide a way for business users to make these improvements in a non-production environment, test, tune, and deploy, all without having a computer science degree from MIT. Powerful and not complicated is the goal. So rounding out the intelligent capture portion is increasing the automation of the process. Now this will start us down the artificial intelligence route. You need to set conditions that validate data coming in from against trusted sources, then start to automate the approval process. So for example, if we create a, a purchase order, and then we receive a delivery receipt, and now an invoice, all at different times in different batches, and all of our quantities match, our part numbers match, the dollar amounts are correct, it's not a duplicate invoice, well, it's approved to pay that, update the ERP system accordingly, and as long as that expenditure is not over the got to go to your boss amount, that a lot of that can be automated. This is also a good time to automatically set uh, general ledger or GL codes, departmental codes, all back to the appropriate part numbers. By reducing, reducing the amount of time spent on re-entering information, the staff of the accounting department can spend more can spend their time on more important and likely more rewarding activities. And for example, they can start to evaluate the supply chain. They can make sure you're getting the best deal from your vendors. Or maybe they'll validate that you, know, you have multiple vendors delivering the same service or product. All of these things are, are important to consider as you're trying to make your company better today than it was yesterday. So artificial intelligence or AI is something you hear a lot about lately. And it's not some system from the future that's going to take over the world. Don't expect the Terminator to show up, you know, come back, you know, come back in time to enter in invoice data or insurance enrollment details. Can you picture it? No, I don't think so. Uh, what AI can do is provide you information in a proactive way. So, for example, we were just talking about invoices. And as an invoice is captured uh, and it comes into your organization, the folks in accounting are looking to see that it's not a duplicate invoice. It's making sure you have all the supporting information for the transaction. It's making sure you have all the supporting information for the vendor, such as a W-9 or a current contract. It's making sure that the vendor doesn't already owe you a credit. All of this information is available for you if you dig for it in your organization and lots of different systems. AI can programmatically provide you with that data. You can also set up conditional approvals, as I mentioned earlier, and start to validate the integrity of the document. So let's talk about something other than an invoice. AI can start to analyze employee documentation and provide you with proactive notifications of future issues. So let's, here's a good use case. Let's say you have a fleet of drivers. Um, maybe you're a school with lots of many, with, you know, many, many buses, or you have a fleet of over-the-road trucks. Both require a staff of drivers. In most cases, uh, drivers need to have an annual physical. You know, they need to go to the doctor. So we can set up a 90-day warning to the driver and their managers that they need to complete that physical and then provide them with a web portal to upload supporting information themselves. Okay, it doesn't sound like the future that Hollywood describes, and maybe it's not sexy, but it does reduce your daily tasks, avoid costly fines around regulations, and overall make your day a little easier. That's a great outcome. So I mentioned a web portal a moment ago. That means you don't have to scan the document, but it's still considered part of your overall capture strategy. Part of a digital transformation strategy needs to help you stop making more paper. Uh, it's a great, a great way to do that is by implementing an e-form solution 
as part of your intelligent capture component. That allows for users, both internal and external, to provide information to you in a highly structured way. That information can then be transformed into very usable data. Combined uh, with workflow, when forms are not completed by a defined deadline, reminders or alerts can also be sent. So I mentioned earlier that your solution would know if, uh, if you're missing a W-9 for vendor payment. Let's, let's talk about another use case. So how about we send that vendor an email alerting them that their payment has been delayed or suspended because they didn't provide you with a W-9. I bet you have that vendor's attention now. Go a step further by providing them either a link to fill out a W-9, that would be the e-form, or upload one they already have. The entire task I just explained can be fully automated. So ask yourself, how long does it take someone in your organization to do that today? You know, that just takes time and effort. That whole process can be avoided by creating a workflow with e-forms for new vendor setup as well. Now, it doesn't have to be uh, in the AP department. It can be in, in other industries as well. Similar tasks are required in financial markets uh, for commercial loans or mortgage loans. Also, something to, something to consider is the form should have the ability to be localized. After all, we are, uh, we're in a global market. So your client, if they prefer to read, say, Spanish, you need to be able to offer them that. And you need to be able, you need to be easy to work with so you avoid that uh, competitive disruption. So furthermore, we need to enable your internal clients. Don't forget about your coworkers. We need to not force them to learn an overly complicated new system. It, it, the system needs to be to be easy to understand. Browser-based, clean interface will help with that. Provi provide them with the information they need and not more. Give them an intuitive view and user adoption will soar. Remember the old adage, keep it simple? The last thing we want to do is take all this time and effort to develop the best digital transformation strategy and execute it accordingly, only to have lackluster user adoption. So finally, we need to make it all work together. Uh, your company probably doesn't use paper and pencil for everything. I don't know any CFOs that still use paper ledgers to calculate the uh, profit and loss for an organization. So since your CEO, your CFO has already invested in a line of business applications, maybe that's an ERP or CRM, you need to make sure that whatever system you select can work with all of them. The word integration can mean a lot of different things to different people. There's a lot of different levels of integration. But simply put, you need to make sure you can validate information from the line of business system and then allow that system to be image enabled which means if you're in a CRM like Salesforce or an HRIS system or an ERP system like Dynamics, you can look at a transaction, hit a hotkey, and have uh, the content management software show you all the supporting information around that transaction or around that employee, for example, without having to do another search or to learn another, another uh, complicated system. You know, just make it easier on your users. Now, most content management systems have this ability, but it's worth mentioning. You don't want to spend lots of time creating this plan to have users not embrace it, as I said. User, user adoption is critical. We need them to use the new process and the new system so we can recognize the savings to reinvest those savings in the next, the next process, the next department, to make your company better tomorrow than it is today. All sounds good, right? Everyone you just says, great, that's awesome. Now what? Well, let's talk about some, some steps to move on from this point. You need to pick an internal champion. Maybe that's you. Maybe that's why you're spending time with us today. Um, you're also going to need someone that has, you know, a, um, personal motivation to make, the, be to make the, the organization better. Usually that comes from somebody within the business unit. And you're also going to need a counterpart uh, from the IT department, if you have an IT department. Next, then pick the department, just one. Maybe that's HR. It's a great place to start or maybe that's accounting. Those are two strong candidates for improvement. And then finally, start looking for that white partner. It's an organization that has experience in your industry with clients the same size as your, as your company. This company should have a strong cloud offering, robust workflow experience, and as we discussed, can help you move forward to streamline the process. Don't worry, the vendor I just described isn't a unicorn, we do exist. One final thought, do something. Doing nothing is a bad decision, one that you will regret. 
There is no such thing as standing still. You're either improving and growing or you're going backwards and your competitors are going to outpace you and disrupt you. Oh, and for those of us that think we don't have competitors, like maybe a government office, just think how happy you'll make your constituents by improving how they can work with you. So we've reached the end of our presentation, or close to it. Now we're going to open this up for questions. If you've had questions, hopefully you've been entering, in, entering them into the GoToMeeting, or excuse me, GoToWebinar panel. So let's see what we have over here. Okay, so uh, let me share with you some questions we've had. Um, here's the first one. You said I can't flip the switch. How fast can we move on a digital transformation plan? Really, that's up to you. Uh, it, it is different for uh, lots of different organizations. It really is going to depend on where you want to get started and what you've done in the past. You know, most of us have tried to make the organization better over the years. Now we're just trying to make it even better again. So maybe you've got some of these steps already done. Um, you will get some very prompt payback. So you're gonna, you, all this time and that you're going to invest will have fast returns. So you'll be able to, to have a good understanding of what those returns look like and then execute them. Uh, so I don't want you to think it's going to take forever to, to achieve this then state you can get there. It's just not, a, it's not like installing a product and off you go. Speaking of products, the next question here is, do all the products need to be from the same vendor? I'm going to go with a no, believe it or not. Now, you know, this is presented by uh, Square9. Obviously, that's who I work for. We have lots and lots of great products. But you may already have something that uh, is in place, and you want to work with that. Maybe you already have eForms, but you need intelligent capture and workflow and doc management. That's fine. Uh, so they don't all have to come from the same vendor. I will share with you, though, you have to be careful not to get the vendors pointing at each other, especially in support mode. Now, the support at Square 9 is second to none. I know I'm sounding like commercial, but uh, we have fantastic support, so I don't think you'll see that from our end. But just to answer your question, nope, they don't have to all be from the same vendor. Here's another good question. I like this one. Uh, can we get started with forms, or do we have to start with document capture? You can start with forms. I will say that, though, that is part of your document capture strategy. So if you don't want to deal with, you know, paper documents, or PDFs, or invoices, or whatever, that's fine. You can start with e-forms, especially with HR. You're probably going to start there anyways. Uh, and then as we get that first project done and start to re uh, realize those savings or those uh, risk mitigations, then you can start going down the path of, of uh, looking at other documents you may already have and expand that capture piece. Let's see what other questions we have here. This is a great one. How do I identify the best department or process to target to, to start with? That's going to change from company to company. If you're a highly regulated organization, you've probably got government forms we need to deal with. That's a great place to start. If you are creating uh, uh, paper and it's getting stored into docu you know, boxes that go off, off storage, that's another great place to start. Here's a place I like to, to you know, if, if you start walking around your organization, here's a great symptom to look at. Go for a stroll this afternoon, look at your different departments. Do you have two monitors on desks and they're copying information from the left side to the right side? They're entering in information about information. By the way, that's the definition of metadata. How can we automate that? That's another great great place. You will see that in a lot of accounting departments, by the way, but I don't want to get stuck on accounting. It can be really any department. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Can we get a copy of this presentation? Oh, I'm glad you liked it. Uh, or at least I entertained you. Uh, I would ask that you get a hold of your um, sales representative at at Square Nine, we can help. We can share this information with you, and then help you down this journey as well. Uh, we do work through uh, a reseller community, so if you're one of our resellers as well, please come right back to uh, uh, Square Nine, definitely. Okay, what about compliance? How does digital transformation help with my 
audit, compliancy, and they're also men mentioning SOC. Of course, there's more than one SOC, SOC 1, SOC 2. It's not left SOC and right SOC. It's a little different. Uh, so really the different compliances you have to address, they're all going to have a lot of documentation around it. Our government loves documentation, right? So um, depending on which type of compliancy, it's all going to benefit you. Some of the SOC compliancy is around process. Process means workflow, so we're going to help you address that. Some of it's around protecting information. That's GDPR and HIPAA. So we're going to secure the information and have an audit trail around that. Who touched this document, when, and what do they do to it? So depending on what kind of compliance you're looking for, it's going to change my answer. But this digital transformation is going to help you address all, most, if not all, of those, as well as increase your efficiency and help pay for all of this. Okay, we're getting close to the end of our time. Actually, we've gone over a little bit. I just realized that. So uh, what I'd like to do now is defer some of those other questions that are out there, and we will get back to you as quickly as we can. So as we wrap up this, this presentation, I'd like to thank you for giving us half an hour of your time today. Your time is very valuable to us. If you have any questions, please visit our website at square-9.com or shoot us an email at sales at square nine square-9.com, and watch for the invitation for a series uh, number two, or session number two for this series, which will be about in, in about a month. Thank you again for your time. Have a great day.